Hi, hi. Uh, I'm going to talk about the end of Moth Flanders. I hope you liked the last third as much as uh, at least most of us liked the first two thirds. Um, I love the end of this story for a lot of reasons, but one of which is the lengths to which she has to go to persuade us that there's a moral. Of course, it would be easy to make this a tragedy and much more um, genre um, appropriate. So criminal biographies might end with the criminal being caught, right, and here executed. Um, and yet it's not this tragic ending, it's this happy comedic ending where she gets everything she wants. And so the way to justify that is to prove that she really did deserve it because she was really repentant and that her story is worth telling anyway because it teaches us how not to revel in vice. Um, I think the book fails at both of those things. Uh, okay, so on 224, which is the first passage I want to look at, she says, this is when she's still just stealing things. She says, on the other hand, every branch of my story, if duly considered, may be useful to honest people and afford a due caution to people of some sort or other to guard against the like surprises and to have their eyes about them when they have to do with strangers of any kind, for tis seldom that some snare or other is not in their way. Okay, she's justifying here, having told us about all of her adventures, all of her stealing by saying that she's really just teaching us how to avoid getting robbed. That's why there was a hundred pages of her stealing things. The moral indeed of all my history is left to be gathered by the senses and judgment of the reader. I'm not qualified to preach them. Let the experience of one creature completely wicked and completely miserable be a storehouse of useful warning to those that read. We should take her as a warning. She's completely wicked and miserable. Is she miserable? Um, and that the moral is in our judgment, almost in our hands actually, which is a nice way of exculpating herself or the book maybe from having to do more for us. And then at the very end of the book, like a page and a half before the book is over, she says, um, she says, she's talking about her Lancashire husband and that he was, this is the bottom of 282, um, as sincere a penitent and as thoroughly a reformed man as ever God's goodness brought back from a profligate, a highwayman, and a robber. I could fill a larger history than this with the evidences of this truth, and but that I doubt that part of the story will not be equally diverting, that that part of the story will not be equally diverting as the wicked part. Okay. So what she's telling us here is that she could talk about Jemmy, her Lancashire husband's um, uh, goodness and what penitence, but that it wouldn't be as good a story. Okay. Um, and then she's in England and she's done well. I do wanna point out two more things before I get to the very end. One is that she, buys a slave, well, she buys two indentured servants, slaves essentially, and this doesn't seem to bother her even though she came over on the boat waiting to be bought herself uh, or indentured servanted herself. Second, also that Jemmy, her Lancashire husband, seems almost infantilized at the end of the story. She has to do everything for him. And what she does is, um, very savvy, but she also uses her money to do it. And the great thing about the end of this story, I think, of this book is that she ends up repentant and virtuous and um, she feels really bad and would never do it again and hopes that her story will um, teach people not to do it because she's so much happier now. 
but she's happy because she's rich and she's rich because she stole all that stuff, right? So you imagine that if someone's really penitent or trying to repent or make up for all of the things that she did in this life and all of the ill-gotten goods that she still has about her, um, that she would, I don't know, give it back, give it to charity, uh, turn herself, uh, uh, turn the money over to the, to the government. Um, there's no universe in which you're really, really sorry for stealing something, but you're unwilling to give it back. And the way she uses that so beautifully at the end makes it seem like the money is just this extra part of the reward that she gets for having been so penitent, so repentant. And her life now, she has everything that she wants, like materially, plus she got back to the husband that she really liked and he never knew he, she was married to someone else. Um, between meeting him and coming back to him, score. And, um, and she gets to go back to England. So yeah, she's penitent, I guess. Um, the stakes are really low. <laughs>